How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. You're watching IMCE and today we're going to talk about the Sony FX30. Okay, so this is a video I thought I would never make because I thought I would never ever buy a Sony camera. And there was a couple of reasons for that. And one reason is because I always thought that they were quite expensive for what you get. You know, there's so much other offerings on the market and I thought that Sony were always were a bit higher. You are paying that Sony tax. The Sony FX30, man, this camera is absolutely amazing. When I first got the camera and I turned it on, I was like, ah, you know, it's, it just looks like just all the others. And I think all these cameras these days do look very similar. But when I started playing with it, that's when I noticed the things, you know, changing. And the reason why I went down this route in the first place is because using the Olympus EM1 Mark II with its fantastic autofocus, great battery life, ease of use, the size, everything, the flip screen is just amazing. And then on the other side of that, using the Pocket 4K with its great codecs, its great image quality, but it was a bit hard to rig battery life and that kind of stuff. And I always wished that I could get something that was a, a mesh between the two. So when the Sony FX30 came out, I, think, I thought to myself, that looks amazing. And then I looked at the price and my eyes started watering. I mean, for you guys in the US, it's not too bad because you pay what, uh, $1,800? But in the UK, it's 2,100. And I don't know why people are calling this cheap. I mean, it might be cheap in Sony land, but it's not cheap, trust me. 2,100 pounds is not cheap. I'm very conservative with my money. I like to get my return on investments very fast and I try to maximize how far my pound can go. So the FX30 didn't really fit that, but then the more I watched videos about it, the look of it and the autofocus and stuff like that, I said to myself, you know what, this actually could be the camera I was looking for. That cross between the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Olympus EM1 Mark II. And there's nothing else around in that price that is gonna support that. So I just went out and bought it. And yeah, and like I said, it's completely blown my mind. We're not gonna go over the specs. We all know the specs by now. It's, it's an APS-C sensor, 4K, downsampled from 6K, and it does 120, 50, whatever, 25. We, we know all the specs now, long gop and all that kind of stuff. This is just my thoughts on, on the camera itself. And I must say that using this on that video that you saw, was just absolutely amazing. That video was just a couple of guys, me and a couple of friends, we went down to our local park in South London, you know, dressed up a little bit and bought a couple of props and I wanted to see how far I could push it in terms of low budget because people don't really have that big budget these days or they just don't want to spend it. So you've got to kind of work around that to try and, you know, maximize your income. I was just amazed at what it produced, man. Like it was absolutely stunning to me. The, the colors, the dynamic range, the ease of use, the stability. And I actually forgot my gimbal that, that day. And when we was walking, I was thinking, oh my God, the gimbal, checked in the car, gimbal's not there. And I thought, you know what, don't worry because I've used this now, you know, in a few test shots around the house and out in the parking lot. It was very stable. So I, I didn't even worry about leaving my gimbal at home. It was just absolutely fantastic. Now there's a lot more that I want to cover in terms of memory and rigging this out and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really want to make this video too long or, you know, start talking about things that a million other YouTubers have spoken about already. I just wanted to show you what using Cine EI was like, because it was my first time using Cine EI, so I had to learn a lot about exposure and how to use um, exposure index and stuff like that, because it's not the same as ISO. Also, when I shot at 100 frames per second, my footage came out extremely noisy. I don't know if that was a mistake of mine, or what happened, but the stuff in 25 and 50 came out absolutely pristine, but 100 frames per second was quite noisy, so I had to do some cleaning on that. So I'll have to work out, you know, what the situation was with that. But yeah, as I said, battery life, the screen, the handling, everything is just absolutely amazing. And I would love to go over a rig with you at some point about the, with this camera and what I, what I chose. And lens-wise as well, lens-wise, at the moment I've got a 28mm f2.0 lens on here. Now this is a basic, basic, basic kit lens. And I went through so many YouTube videos to, you know, looking at this lens and seeing what it could do. And I, again, I was disappointed. I don't really want to rag on people or, or act like I'm a hater, but I was very disappointed. But one guy, I think he was called the Jilted Filmmaker or something like that. And his video, what he shot at, of his family at the zoo and stuff like that, it was just absolutely amazing. So I said, yep, jump in, got this lens. Traded in a very old lens at CEX, so I ended up paying 61 pound for this. And the autofocus is absolutely amazing. I actually really, really love it. And in that video, all the car park shots that you saw when we moved to the car park were shot with this lens. So it can do a good job. And I'm, and I'm, I'm confident in using this in, in, um, in paid professional work. So yeah, that's that one. The other lenses I used were the Sigma 
18 to 35, the old trusty, everyone knows this lens. Absolutely amazing lens, workhorse. There's a reason why this lens is so hyped up and it is really worth the hype. You know, people make their jokes about it, uh, Smegma and all that kind of stuff and get a different lens than the Sigma. But trust me, this lens I use on all my cameras and it is absolutely amazing. And then the final lens which I used for some of the shots with the guy on the Maracas was the Helios 44M. And this is the Cine housing one. I, I made a little reel about this, but I'll actually be making a full blown video about this. Yeah, this um, 3D printed, um, highly polished, highly customized Helios lens. And it's just, yeah, I just, I just love this, man. It is absolutely amazing. Great, great quality. But we'll talk about that. And then finally, the first, actually not finally, it, the first thing I actually bought when I got there, um, when I got the camera was a Metabone speed booster for Sony, EF to Sony, because I plan to use all my EF mount lenses. I, I'm not, I don't plan to change them. I'm probably gonna get two cheap Sony ones, got the 28 and I'll probably get a 50. But other than that, it will be manual focus on these kind of lenses here. So I, yeah, I've got the Metabone speed booster. And yeah, it's great going to almost full frame and the extra stop of light, yep, yeah, does fantastic on a crop sensor. I have no problems using the crop sensor. You know, I've been using them for the Pocket 4K, the Canon EOS M's, the Olympus. I've used so many crop sensor cameras, it's, it doesn't make no difference to me. It's absolutely fine. No, it's not gonna be my A camera. It could be very easily, but it's not, because as I said before in my previous video with my Panasonic uh, Pro Rig, the Panasonic is my, my camera. I'm using it right now with the 35 millimeter Seven Artisans lens, and I really love this setup. I love everything about it perfect cinema camera or work camera, run and gun camera, everything. This is gonna be secondary because like I said, it's gonna take the place of my Olympus with its amazing autofocus, battery life size, flip screen, and my Blackmagic with its amazing codec and you know, just the, how, how much you can manipulate the image. So those two are actually gonna be sold now. The Olympus and the Blackmagic are gonna be sold. Still waiting to sell the Blackmagic, but the Olympus is gone. And yeah, I'm really happy with this Sony. And I just hope I don't turn into a fanboy, but I think it's gonna be, <laughs> I think that's coming. I think it's inevitable to be honest, because I'm already started looking at Sony full frame cameras. So let's see where it goes. It, you know, I, again, I'm not just a DP. I am a camera connoisseur. I really enjoy this you know, shooting, editing, creating. As long as it's interesting, I really love it. So it goes a bit further for me than just, you know, buying cameras and selling them next week or whatever. It's more than just a job for me. This is more about me doing something that I love to do. So guys, I hope that you found this interesting. If you're sitting on the fence about the FX30, I wouldn't doubt it. It is an amazing camera. Sony really did knock it out of the bag with this one. The price might seem high at first, but then when you consider what you get and then when you're using it, it's just absolutely fantastic. And I'm so glad that I chose that over the R7 or any other camera that I was I was debating with the autofocus. You know, it, it is amazing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the footage that you saw at the beginning of the video. And any questions you have, leave them down in the comment section down below and I shall see you on the next one. Later.